Calmer, wiser, and happier. It's time for Zen Commuter, episode 793. Good morning, travelers, and welcome to your morning Zen Commute. I am your host, Tom Walters, and this is Zen Commuter, your Monday through Friday podcast aimed at moving you forward peacefully, helping you live a calmer, more satisfying life. Today's episode is brought to you by the 8 Sleep System Mattress. Travelers, how you sleep at night determines not only how you're going to wake up in the morning, but what your entire day is going to be like. So, of course, it's going to be absolutely pivotal that you get a great night's sleep. And you can do that on the 8 Sleep System mattress. And it's not just because the mattress is super comfortable. It's because it has sleep technology woven right into it. There's no need to perch your smartphone on the edge of your bed. There's no need to wear your Fitbit or other activity tracker to gauge your sleep. Now, the 8 Sleep System mattress does it for you. Not only does it wake you up when you are at your lightest level of sleep, but the night before when you go to bed, you can even program it to be warm when you crawl into it. And I've been able to work out a great deal with the 8 Sleep System Mattress people so that Zen Commuter listeners get $175 off the purchase of their mattress. Simply go to zncommute.com forward slash zen8, Z-E-N-E-I-G-H-T, and use the code zen175. Let me give that to you one more time. That's zncommute.com forward slash zen8, Z-E-N-E-I-G-H-T, and use the code zen175 at checkout. Additional sponsorship is brought to you by Wake Up Moving. If your days start hectic and end the same way, it's time for a change. It's time for Wake Up Moving. To be notified of when the course is launching, simply go to wakeupmoving.com. And now, back to our episode. Travelers, you are in for an absolute treat. I met with Maria Felipe about a week ago, I believe it is. She and I had a great interview, and I'm going to share it with you today right now. But she is an amazing woman that has so much to talk about in regards to being happy. As you might expect, she and I got along famously. What an absolutely wonderful, wonderful woman. I am excited for you to meet her. So let's get right into our interview today with Maria Felipe. Maria Felipe is the author of Live Your Happy. A Cuban-American born in Miami, she is 5 feet 9 inches with a towering personality to match. After experiencing success as a model and actress, including hosting World Wrestling Federation TV shows, she felt called inward and studied to become a reverend at Pathways of Light, an accredited religious school inspired by A Course in Miracles. She leads monthly services in both Spanish and English at the Unity Church in Burbank, and I am very excited to meet with her today. Welcome, Maria. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so happy to join with you and collaborate for the higher good. Absolutely. I think you and I have a similar goal, and that is helping the world understand that being happy is your birthright. And it doesn't mean that we're going to be 100% you know, skipping through daisies every day, but we can choose to retweak and tweak our thinking so that we can be optimally happy, that happiness is our default. Would you agree with that? Well, yes, absolutely. It's um, happiness is our inheritance. Happiness is our function, you know, and even the Course in Miracles says God's will for us is happiness. So it's just um, we just forgotten. So I think that you and I are both here just to, you know, be like a little alarm alarm and little little alarm clock, um, <laughs> you know, daily alarm clock, you know, with through your work and through my work to just remind people, but not only as remind them, remind ourselves, you know. Um, that's what's powerful is that we're really, you know, always doing it for ourselves. And that's a very good point because I tell my listeners all the time, I said, you know, this podcast is for you, but I have to tell you that whether I am interviewing new guests or, you know, interviewing guests or talking about things that I know, a lot of times I'm remembering and bringing to the fore the things that I can use in my life as well. So it's a, as well, you know, as much as I say, hey guys and gals, this is for you on the back end, I'm like, yeah, I'm still learning some stuff too, which is awesome. Yeah, you know, it's always usually, it's always for us, really, you know, because we're just a mirror. Um, that's what's so beautiful about being on this path is that, you know, you start to recognize that when you let go of something outside of yourself or you forgive something outside of yourself, it's always for you because you're letting yourself off the hook um, by not holding on to that grievance outside of you. 
Yo, absolutely, absolutely. And I learn uh, the most when I am sharing myself with other people. You know, when I'm obviously, as you know, not clinging to that ego, but really looking to commune with the rest of the world. Yeah, I think it's there's something to be said about um, just being open and honest, authentic, and just real and raw about your heart and hardships or, you know, have whatever things are going on in life because I feel that it's just helpful because people relate to you and they're like, oh, you know, if you can, if you did it, then I can do it. Um, and I also feel that when we're open and completely honest and authentic, the other person gets to experience you as well versus of when you're pretending or, or shut down, you know, you can't experience the other person and vice versa. So I feel that the openness is, is really important. And not only that, I always say, authenticity is sexy, you know, it just is. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and it's so funny because for people who are looking to uh, find a significant relationship or not, I mean, obviously they should find it with themselves first, but I would agree with you wholeheartedly. People can see through BS a mile down the road. So if you're trying to impress a guy or a girl and you're just like putting on airs, chances are pretty good that you'd have a lot more success if you just said, hey, be who you are. Warts and all, as my mom would say. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I think that that's, that's, I love that you bring that up because in reference to relationships, um, because I feel that there's sometimes a lot of pretending, um, to get what you want. And, um, it's not, that's not being loving, you know, or you're trying to act a certain way so that you don't mess it up so that the other person could like you more. And, um, you can never really mess it up. You know, you're just, you just do the best you can with the awareness you have in the moment. You know, absolutely. And I think a lot of times one of the challenges that we may have as a as a culture is that people put on those airs and in doing so, the other person is kind of falling in love with um, an illusion. So when the reality of who that person is, as opposed to what they presented originally, you know, becomes clear, it's like, wow, this isn't what I really signed up for. You're not really who I thought you were going to be. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know, it's it's interesting because I had a client of mine that I was working with. One, I used to do um, a lot more one-on-one -on -one sessions before, and um, she said to me she was really um, upset and sad because you know she had broken up and with a with her boyfriend and they had been together for a lot of years and she was upset because he was with somebody else. But the most thing that she was upset about is that she said she wished she wouldn't have acted like she cared too much. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That that she would have acted like she didn't care too much. That she she wished she hadn't shown him that she was jealous about this other girl, you know, kind of reaching out to him or whatever. Um, and and it's interesting how the ego, you know, the fearful part of our mind is so vicious, you know, because it's, she's literally saying, "I wish I wouldn't have been myself, yeah. <laughs> so that I can pretend to be somebody else, so I could be with this person." And it's sad, but that's what happens. That's what we do. And it's, you know? Uh, you know, everybody's got their own path, I say, but it's it seems like ego is very strong. And that's why I'm really excited about your book, because it talks about ego in a way that is understandable and like relatable. And I, I'm sure you may or may not have read uh, Eckhart Tolle's book, uh, A New Earth. Um, and he yes, I have. He talks about ego, obviously, and he talks about it very clearly and concisely, but it's not that relatable. So I, I like the fact that when we talk about ego and we talk about our higher self, that people are getting a, a different vision or a different version from a whole bunch of different people, whether it be you, whether it be me, whether it be Eckhart. And I love the fact that ego is becoming such a mainstream word. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, because it needs to come out, you know, the, 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 the definition and this concept of ego needs to be exposed because the ego doesn't want to be exposed. It wants to, you know, have private thoughts and it doesn't want to be exposed because it knows that you will heal um, when you expose the thoughts that it has within your mind. So it's I think it's wonderful that it's starting to come out, this concept of ego, which is different than the worldly ego. You know, the ego world, worldly, is diff they use it in a different way, like that person has a lot of ego, right, or right. whatever. Um, in this case, you know, the ego, I talk about it in a way that it's a thought system in your mind. You, you know, so it's the part of your mind that is fearful. It's the part of your mind um, that judges. It's a part of your mind that is, um, you know, I should have, I could have, I wish I would have done it better. And a lot of people don't relate the ego to that. You know, they relate the ego to a personable person, you know, that's egotistical. Right, right. right. But in this case, ego is a thought system of fear in your mind, um, which I call also the cuckoo voice, right. cuckoo voice, um, that speaks a lot of caca, you know, 
<laughs> Professionally speaking, of course. <laughs> Professional, very fancy, very <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's Harvard speak. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, that's just there's something about making it light and fun. You know, exactly just making it light and fun. If it isn't fun, I'm not there. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like the fact that when I talk about ego now, and because it's becoming so um, commonplace, that and maybe it's just my audience, but when I talk about ego, my uh, the people that I talk to and the people that listen to the show know that it's ego as not egotistical, but the ego, you know, the the more human self. And that's how I put it in my podcast and how I talk about it in my speech. You know, when there are two different aspects to who we are, there's our human self and there's our higher self. And our human self is usually the ego, the fear, the worry. And our higher self is the part of us that says, hey, it's all good. Don't you worry. No stress. I want to be with everybody. I want to show love to everybody. So that's what I talk about. So when I talk about ego, when I talk about my human self, people are like, oh, yeah, I get that. Mm, that's so cool. Yes. Um, you know, I think it's very helpful. I feel a lot of people that live in this, you know, I call it the circus of a world that we live in. Because it is a circus, you know, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> um, it, there's, there's no... But many many of us don't know the way our mind works. No, you know we're just like waking up every day on automatic pilot, transed out. You know, doing the same old thing every day, the same routine, not understanding that you are the decision maker, that you can discern between love and fear every second within the second as you step into consciousness. Um, you can actually choose your experience. You know, it's never about the behavior. The healing is always in your mind. Right. But there's many people that don't understand that they have, you know, two thought systems that run the show. And depending what thoughts you're choosing, you could go straight to hell or straight to heaven. You know, it's not somewhere you go to later on when you die. It's really right here, right now. I'm sure that you've experienced being in hell. I have. Oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. In this, in, in this world. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, Absolutely. Yeah. So Wait. depending on, on what you're thinking is what's going to give you your experience. And to, and to your point, you can turn off that switch at any time. You can decide which way you want to think at any time, literally with a thought, with a second. Yeah, exactly. The, that's why I always say the second within the second, literally, because you can actually just it's, it's just really, really comes to thought clusters. You know, whatever thought you're going to you can just stop yourself and then choose again, you know, and just choose again. I always say you can choose Holy Spirit again, which will automatically in that instant change your perception if you're willing. One of my favorite words when I was younger was cancel. <laughs> yeah, cancel or, you know, stop it, you know, stop, stop it. Yeah, because my mom would say all the time, you know, I'd say something. I'm like, Ugh, I'm like, and she's like, get rid of that thought. I'm like, how? She's just like, just say cancel. I'm like, what does that do? She's like, well, the intention of the word cancel means that you are obliterating that thought. You're choosing something different, something more uplifting, something more positive. So when I was younger and I didn't have as firm a grasp on creating my own thoughts, I'd, there'd be days I'd go, I'm like, ah, cancel, ah, cancel, ah, cancel. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. And I love that your mom taught you that early on. What a, what a beautiful woman, you know, me. I think of cancel like when somebody's talking to me. I've done that before that they start to talk to me about something that I remotely don't don't align with. I'm like, okay, in my mind, I don't tell them, but I'm like, cancel, cancel, cancel. Oh, no, 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 please, 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 no, no. Oh, cancel, cancel, cancel. No, no, no. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Please, please, please. <laughs> no, please don't poop on my party. Don't poop on my party. I'm really happy right now. Please, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no I'm good, I'm good. For me, I call it my psychic shield. So if I meet somebody new and uh, they just start unloading in a negative way. I'm like, whoa, shields up. Okay, okay, I'm protected now. It's just gonna bounce off me, and I just like kind of nod kindly with a smile. I'm like, uh, and it, I give people the the three strikes rule, and I and I mean it to be as kind as possible. But you know, if I meet somebody and they just unload, it's like, oh man, I'm having a crappy day. You know, my dog is sick, and you know, my boss is being a real pain in the you know what. I'm like. Oh, you know, first off, I'll say, um, I'm sorry that you're going through that. And, you know, are there any things that happened today that are really good, that are uplifting? And if they are able to say, well, you know, this happens, this is cool. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. There's like some salvageable uh, nature here. And um, but if they say, no, nah, it's just been a crappy day altogether. And if, you know, we go away and two weeks later, or a couple of days later, I meet them again and it's the same thing. 
I'm like, you know, offer up some suggestions that had to tool their, you know, retool their thinking. And if they take it, that's cool. And if they don't, I'm like, I don't think they're on the same path that I am. So I think I need to just kind of jettison myself and say, best of luck to you. May you find what you're looking for. You know, obviously I'm saying this in my head, but it's like, oh, okay. I guess that wasn't supposed to be somebody that is going to be sticking around in my life for right now. Does that make sense to you? Yes, absolutely. You know, I, I love how you, you know, you honor your, that's self love, really. Um, that's honoring your true self, you know, with a capital S, I like to say, because, you know, you're, you know, you're just being in your authentic space of what you're going to allow into your consciousness. And, um, I think that's being loving. You know, I think a lot of people will be like, Oh, that's harsh that you don't accept that person completely or accept their bullshit completely. But right. I don't, I, you know, sacrifice is not love. You know, actually, it's the opposite. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're, we're, we're taught in this world that sacrifice is love, and you sacrifice yourself for love, and, um, you know, it's not. So by you, you know, being, you know, the, the three strikes thing is like, or what is it that you say, three three something? Yeah, three strikes, yeah. Three, three strikes, yeah. Three strikes. Um, I think that that's a beautiful reflection of self-love to me. Because I think, you know, everybody has a rotten day every now and then, so that's why I make it don't just, like, not – one shot deal but if someone comes up to me and they're having you know they're unloading and i'm like no oh, maybe they had a tough day so i'm like if they come back a couple of days later and they're still having that they're in that space i'm like no oh, i have a feeling that's who you are not the day that you had <laughs> so more power to you i send you light i send you love but i'm on my own path and i think i'll have to go it away from you <laughs> yeah also there's um the holy spirit is always going to meet us where we're at. And that's what we do too. We meet the person where they're at right. versus, um, you know, trying to be grando, Joyce, grandos, Joyce, whatever. I can't speak English sometimes. Um, <laughs> grandos, like, like bigger, like bigger than the person, right? Right. It's more of meeting them where they're at of like, Hey, you know what? I get you. I get what you're going through. Although, you know, I'm not going to join you in your poopoo party, you know, right. Cause, because I'm not being truly helpful by, by, um, um, feeding your littleness, you know? And one of the most important things to me is to that point is to acknowledge that my way of thinking is not the way. It's it's a way that works for me. And if you are similar in nature, similar in energy, that's cool. And we're not going to be the exact same. But if you come to us, you know, if you come to this relationship as uh, positive and uplifting, then, oh, yeah, we can get along. But I would I never look down on people that are in a negative space or just on a different path. And that's how I say it. I'm like, you know what? Your path is not better or worse than mine. It's just different and it's not jiving right now. So I send you love and I send you light and hope you find what you need to make the best of you in this world. Well, I mean, also you can really love somebody and forgive them and really have, have, you know, have a harmonious relationship with them, but it doesn't mean you need to, you need, you need to go to coffee with them. Oh, right. You know, oh. <laughs> like, people have it. <laughs> people have it like people have it like you know you need to love everybody and go to coffee with them but no you can you know like currently like what's going on in the politics you know i i really choose to um you know love our president and be forgiving towards him and all that stuff but it doesn't mean i want to go to coffee with him right, you know what i mean right. so i i think that there's just a fine line there that people think oh just because i need to forgive do i really need to hang out with this person not necessarily is that that needs to happen you know um it's just all all the change like i said again is in the mind not in the behavior right what do you think brings people to an awakening of the knowledge that there is free uh, free thought, so to speak? That you know, you talked about earlier that people wake up and they just kind of go through autopilot, and that's one of my favorite words I talk about on the show all the time. It's like you know, Zen commuters about being purposeful. So, why? What do you think it is that wakes people up from going from just autopilot reacting to understanding that there is a different choice? Well, I think that um, the first thing is is that you you start to recognize it when you 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 start to really observe right. your life and and be an observer of your um, your thought system throughout the day. I think that that and that in itself you start to see um, that there's a pattern there that it's it's really coming from you, not the other person, because you know whatever is causing any type of effect in your emotional state. Of, of, of existence is really has to do with your thoughts. So if you become an observer, um, when you wake up in the morning and what thoughts you're holding, if you really are present versus like just being an automatic pilot and saying, okay, I got to get up. I have to get coffee. 
I have to go to the refrigerator. It's more like, okay, let me get up. Let me plant my feet on the floor. Let me be present to that moment. Right. Um, you'll start to recognize that your day is so much more different. I'm like, you know, you go and you start brushing your teeth and you're like very present to brushing your teeth versus thinking about what your boss is going to say at work. That's a different frequency right there, right? Right. Because if you're, if you're present to brushing your teeth and being like, oh my God, I'm so amazing. I'm brushing my teeth right now. This feels so good. It's so, it's, it's so different than, oh my God, what's my boss going to say when I get to work or something like that. So right there, you're going to start to see that even your feeling in your heart, it's going to either constrict or release depending on the thoughts that you're having. And for instance, like for myself, if I've, I've driven on the car and sometimes I've had thoughts of my mom, my mom is older and she has health issues. And, and I've thought about her sometimes passing away. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that the my thoughts are would was give me the sadness. It's not like she is going to die. It's more my thoughts about her dying that right. are making me sad, right? So it's, it's so I, I noticed that it's really a thought. It's not like it's really happening. It's my thought thinking that it's going to happen. So that tells me right there that it's my thoughts that that really take over my emotions. Now, is it safe to say that with what you just said that you are a person who meditates a lot? Yes. I do. I can't say that I do it um, regularly or a lot. Um, right. I, I do. I am a very mindful person. So right. I feel like I'm constantly meditating right. because I'm, I'm very, very vigilant of my mind because um, the ego is very vicious. Um, and the Course in Miracles says that the ego speaks first and speaks the loudest. Also, that our mind is not very disciplined or consistent. Right. And we're too okay with mind wandering. So I'm very vigilant and mindful of my thoughts on a constant basis, and I'm very careful of where it's taking me. So I think that that's a very that's a meditative process in itself. Absolutely, and I, one of the things I try and relay to my listeners is that it becomes second nature once you do it. I mean, you start off when I tell my listeners, I'm like, you really need to be intentional. You have to think about reactions that you have with people, how you're feeling when you wake up in the morning. You just have to be like vigilant of all your thoughts. And I caution them to say that it's not laborious. Once you, you, in the beginning, when you're not used to it, you might be thinking, I'm like, oh, my brain is like thinking all the time. I'm watching everything. And I'm like, yeah, okay, in the beginning, it might be a little tough. But once you get into that flow, it's just kind of how you are. You know, it's just, your mind just says, goes into auto, autopilot in a good way where it's like, okay, you know what? Uh, this interaction just happened and this is how I felt as opposed to, you know, just reacting to how something happens and just looking at your world in a new way, as my mom would say. Yeah. And also, um, you feel better after I feel that sometimes I find myself a little bit resistant to meditating cause I want to, you know, just do what I got to do or I'm very, um, you know, just distracted with things. But I always notice that when I take that time, even if I don't want to, because all this stuff is about practice, right? Right. Um, I feel better after. So I'm like, wow, I'm so happy I did that. Um, and sometimes we just have to be gentle with ourselves because sometimes we might not connect as much as we want. And that's okay. I think not, not judging yourself is doing the meditation, you know? So oh, yeah. I think it's really, I think it's very important, that part. Yes, and I, I teach meditation, and that's one of the things I bring up all the time. It's like, and I tell people, I'm very candid. I'm like, you know, sometimes I sit down to meditate, and I get right into my meditative state. My mind is calm. I am in that moment interacting in a wonderful way with my being, with my soul. And there are other times I'm like meditating. I'm like, oh, that's right. I got to get that podcast out. No, breathe. Okay, <laughs> back to breathing. It's like, okay, cool. It's like, oh, you know what? I got to get that marketing thing out. Okay, back to breath. I'm like, so I tell them like some meditations are gold and some are. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, it's just the mind is just such a kooky thing, you know? Um, that's why it's, it's so important to be mindful and to discern and to be, you know, very aware of your thoughts because, because it's just, it doesn't have discipline. It's not consistent. Um, and I do feel, and I'm, I'm happy to know that you teach meditation. I did see that on your website. Um, you have a beautiful website, by the way. I did look at that today. Oh, thank um, you so much. Yeah, and I saw that, you know, you do teach meditation, and I feel that it's just really important meditation to come back to your true self. Um, also, the meditation helps pump up the volume of the Holy Spirit voice within your mind, which is a voice of love. Absolutely. Um, it really, really helps, like, really strengthen that muscle because, again, the ego is so vicious and it speaks first and speaks the loudest. So doing that meditation really strength, strengthens that muscle of love in your mind. And it really is like a muscle, and I tell people that too when, you know, 
when I tell people about meditation and the benefits of it, I say, you know, if you spend time each day becoming quiet, there are times it's going to be scary because that's exactly what I tell them. Like the thoughts that you think you're going to hear right from the get go when you quiet your mind are going to be that, you know, is going to be the ego is going to be that negative loop that says you're not worthy. You know, you're scared. You don't have enough there. People don't love you, but if you sit with it, just like you said, if you strengthen that muscle and power through, and it, it's not power through is probably not the best word, but if you stick with that, create that practice, that voice of ego becomes softer and the voice of your higher self becomes so much, I don't want to say louder, but clearer. And you just, when you get out of a meditation, you're like, you know what? I'm okay. And which is an awesome space to be in, obviously. Yeah, I, I like the word clear. That that actually describes it perfectly. Right. Is, is the the clarity of um, also you you have a sense of just you know peace. You know, it brings you peace. Um, also, what it does is is that it brings you back in alignment, so that you are not you know the ego can't have its way with you. Right. <laughs> you <laughs> right. <know? laughs> exactly. Nobody wants that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, can you tell listeners a little bit about The Course of Miracles? I actually know about it because my mom actually uh, studied The Course of Miracles when I was growing up. When I was like 16 years old, I remember seeing the books around the house. And um, I remember asking my mom, like, what's this? She's like, I'll teach it to you a little later on. Uh, and uh, we ended up, she ended up teaching me meditation instead of A Course of Miracles. But for the listeners, can you tell them what A Course of Miracles is? Sure. Um, that's funny you mentioned that because when you were talking about your mom earlier, I was like, Hmm. Did she study the course? I don't <laughs> she <know> did. Why. <laughs> yeah, it kind of came to mind because you brought her up a couple of times and it seems like she's very awake in consciousness and stuff. And I know that the Course of Miracles really helps with that. Right. Um, so I was like, huh. So the Course of Miracles is um, it's a it's a, a book in which um, was written in um, 1976 by Helen Sh Shuckman and Bill Thetford. Um, they were both psychologists in, in New York, and um, they had this relationship that was very um, just a lot of turmoil, and they didn't get along. Um, actually, um, she didn't even believe in God or anything, um, and she started to receive um, this voice, started to come to her to write, to dictate this Course in Miracles, and she thought she was losing her mind because she wasn't even, didn't even believe in God right. and, so, um, and, and Jesus or anything. So um, she channeled this material and, and built that for help her to type it out. Um, supposedly, it's a channel material through um, the voice of Jesus. Um, people ask me a lot, like, is that true or not? Um, I, I don't know. For me, it's it's true, you know, right. because I've been studying it for over 20 years. But that's not important. You know, I think what, what's important is the message that the Course is giving us, which mm -hmm. is a few messages. One is the biggest, biggest thing about the Course in Miracles is really to help you, which we were just talking about, to really help you hear the voice of Holy Spirit in your mind. It really hel helps you to have a relationship with your internal teacher. Right. Because for so long, we are and we still are run by fear. So the Course of Miracles helps you undo the fearful thoughts that have been created throughout eons and eons of time and cultivate this relationship with Holy Spirit and start to create different perceptions in your life. Um, a perception change in the Course from fear to love is actually called the miracle. That's why it's called the Course of Miracles because it's a course of creating miracles. And it's not miracles like, oh, you know, miracles happen like of the world. You know, right. not the, that, that. The miracle within the Course of Miracles is really a change of perception from fear to love. So within your life, whenever you have an issue, like let's say with your boss or you have an issue with your spouse or in relationships or money, whatever that is, um, what the course does is help you understand that you, that form, whatever is going on in form, whatever problem, cannot have a hold of you if you choose it not to have it. Right. So you can literally change your perception of that issue or problem, which in truth is not even real because the course says only love is real and all else is an illusion. Right. You can go ahead and experience the situation differently by applying the Course in Miracles principles. And I love the fact that you designate Holy Spirit as opposed to God or any one God, because I would imagine that the Course of Miracles is just that. It is non-denominational. It's not any one religion. It's just your high, whatever your higher self is, that connection to your higher self is what it helps um, bring out. Would that be an accurate assessment? Yes, because what it is, is is the reason I don't say God is because God really has nothing to do with it. Right. 
besides besides hold us in high regard all the time and just hold our hold hold space for us to remember that we're in the mind of God. That's all God does really is is not even make this consciousness of world real. You know, um, the, so what happens is, is that the course would say that Holy Spirit within the mind is really our connection to God, right? to, to that consciousness, because God doesn't make this world real. It's funny because a lot of people say, oh, um, why does God, you know, create wars or why does God create starving children? And the truth is the course would say God doesn't even know what the heck is going on here, <laughs> right? Because it holds us on such a pedestal, and this is so beautiful, it always makes me want to cry saying it, holds us in such high regard and knows our truth that holds us there in that space so that we can remember again. Right, right. And that is, getting back to meditation, that's why I am such a, you know, an advocate of meditation because just like you said, when you silence all the fear, all the noise, all the worry, and you connect to that uh that holiness, that higher version of yourself, your higher self, there is such a palpable connection that I feel, and I've had meditations that have been extremely profound where I literally have felt every living thing in my being and it is just obviously yeah. very strong. Yeah, that is, um, that's that space that is eternal. It's that space, uh, it's really the experience of being in the mind of God. Right. You know, um, it's that space of oneness. And then in that space, you start to recognize, heck, you know, this can't be all there is, is a separation, this bodies, you know, um, there's much more, there's much of a more vast, vastness and expansiveness. Um, you know, this is not all there is, is what I also feel that meditation teaches. Like there's a whole nother realm and whole nother oh, yeah. um, space that we are and we come from, you know, that's not of this, of this world. And I'm sure, gut, uh, gauging from your background uh, as a model, as an actress, you probably may see, may have seen a lot of people that were just fully invested in their physicality, meaning that they thought that you come to, you know, they probably don't even think that they come to earth. Like, you're born, you have a body, and then you die. And then, like, while you're here, you just got to do everything for that body, everything for your human connection and not understanding that there's something much more. Um, have you found that in your past? Yeah, I've, I've not only found it in my past with my colleagues, but myself. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right, right. <It's> like, <laughs> um, all my twenties, you know, I was addicted to form. You know, when I mean form, is I was addicted to um, my happiness and my source being outside of me. Right. Um, and that's something that collectively we suffer from in this world. Um, everything outside of me defined me. Um, including being, you know, an actress and a TV host, you know, if my job defined me, you know, um, right. all my auditions were very crucial. All my auditions meant a lot to me. Um, they needed to happen or I was a hot mess. Right. Um, not only my career, but also um, relationships. You know, if I wasn't in a relationship with a man, I was very depressed. You know, I needed to be in relationship and that relationship needed to work and that man needed to complete me. That man was my God. Right. So it was a very lonely road. And I think that that's why I finally got to where I am now, because I was such in hell um, and I was such an elusive happiness. My happiness was false happiness. It was a happiness that was temporary. Right. So if I would book a TV show, I was happy for a hot second. But then I would feel like crap after because I didn't feel worthy of it or because it would be finished or because I wouldn't get it. Um, the same thing with my relationships, you know, if, if, if that man, you know, didn't want to be with me or didn't act or, or didn't act the role that I assigned to that him or her, you know, being a friend or a boyfriend, whatever, right. um, I was, I was upset. So my emotions were dependent on everything that was outside of me and I suffered so much. And that's why in my teachings now and in the book, I'm very, very adamant and very, you know, expressive about that your source and what defines you is not outside of you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Was there one event or was it a series of events that had you um, understanding, for want of a better word, your truth about, you know, you know, before you talked about booking shows and all that and how empty you felt. But obviously now you're in a space where like, wow, my life is amazing. So what led you up to that point? Was it one event? Was it a series of events that happened uh, that got you to this point? It was a series of, of events. It also was um, a lot, of, a lot to do with willingness and um, no, and living these principles without compromise. 
especially the Course in Miracles principles without compromise, um, because I was compromising them a lot in my 20s, because I was studying the Course in Miracles for over 18 years, by the way, I was studying it, but I was compromising um, its teachings, right. right? Because I would go to a course group every, you know, every week, um, once a week, and I would feel good for a couple of days. Oh, I am love, I am love. But then I would look for love outside of myself, right. you know? So yeah. it wasn't an, it wasn't an alignment. Um, that's why, you know, I mean, a lot of us could relate to this. I was like in self-help desperation, you know, I would read books and watch Oprah back in the day when she was popular and right. Anthony Robbins and all these things. I was just addicted to these books. And I remember that I never really felt like consistent happiness. I would feel good for a little while. But then it would go away. And, and that's why, you know, when things started to change for me was in 2009 when um, I went to ministerial school for a Pathways of Light to become a minister. But not to become a minister. It was more because it was a curricular program. I mean, a ministerial uh, credit, credit, credited program on the Course in Miracles. So it was kind of like going to the University of A Course in Miracles. And nice. I went because of, I went because of that. I didn't want to be a minister. I didn't want to be a teacher of God. I didn't even want to write or be an author. Um, <laughs> for me, it was like I was so tired of suffering. Right. I was I was like such in hell. I thought that sooner or later I would die. Right. Yeah. Because I was so addicted to the outside world that I went really to the school to for it to save me in a way. Um, and I went not to become a minister. On the contrary, I told the person that told me to go to the school. I was like. Hell no, I'm not going to be a minister. I'm an actress and a model. Like, I don't want to be a minister. <laughs> I was like, I was like, hell no, uh, that's not me. Um, but but when I started studying, my my purpose and started to ignite in me. And you asked me what made the change. And what made the change was, a, you know, always hard things in your life make you want to change. One of them was my divorce. I had a divorce in 2009. And that really catapulted me to start ministerial school, which I did. Um, instead of going to a psychiatrist, I said, let me do this. You know, this right. sounds more like an alignment to what I want to do. And I began going there and I started to have a shift of perception of where the, the teachings were helping me really undo a lot of things in my mind and heal a lot of things of my past and really incorporated this um, thought system, which is what I share in my book of really living principles at max capacity in your life with your relationship with yourself and others. That's when my life started to change is when I started to bring these teachings into my experience. And that was a missing element and key that was lacking in my 20s. Right. right? I wasn't living it. So the, the book is called Live Your Happy, but it's really called Live A Course of Miracles. But I, I couldn't use that because that's already played out. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> copyright <but> I, patent <laughs> pending. <laughs> but I used it like Live Your Happy, which means like, really being in the world and you know you're in the world but you know you're not of it right and that you lack nothing and have everything and i really needed to get to that space without compromise and that's what was missing so i wanted to write something that didn't speak more to your intellect and to your mind as much as it spoke to your heart and to inspire you to go out there and live this stuff and I am I and I you know what I will speak for my listeners as well. I am very thankful that you did. And anybody you know any li anybody listening to this show, I would encourage you so much to pick up the book. It is absolutely amazing. So thank you for bringing it to light. Oh, thank you. It's um such an honor, you know, to be <laughs> able to 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 share this with the world. And and again, you know, I always say, not even the book will make you happy, you know, because nope. that's because nothing outside of you has that dominium. That's what's so powerful that it's always within you. You, you know, it is helpful, but there isn't anything outside of you that could, you know, d determine that happiness for you. That's up to you. No, and exactly. You bring up a good point, too, about uh, people that kind of I don't want to say get addicted. That's kind of harsh. But, you know, going to self-help uh, seminars and all these different personal development things and just really just coming out. You know, like you said, for a half hour, they're like, oh, this is cool. And then an hour later, they're back into their old patterns and they're like, oh, my life sucks. It's like, oh, man. And on some level, I'm excited that people are drawn to that because it means that their soul is kind of on the, uh, you know, kind of like ready to break free. So, but there's like one missing piece. It's going to kind of make that whole um, transformation complete. So the fact that they're looking for something is awesome. Hopefully within that, realm they find out that it isn't anything outside of them it's what's it what's inside of them that creates that transformation yeah and you know again i feel that 
you know, there's just something to be said about really just being willing, you know, yeah. at, you know, between one and 10, like out of 10 to be just really willing. You know, I feel that, you know, yeah, you, you can go to these, you know, seminars and it is showing a sign of willingness. Although, you know, I think that now the time has come just because we've been run with so much fear for so long right. that I feel that there there should be this element or, or would be helpful. I don't want to say the word should, but more of it, right. it will be helpful if if we start to really want to have this change take place um, because we're worthy. Again, we started the show with this, which is your function is happiness. You know, God's will for you is happiness. So I feel that now it's like the no compromise zone. You know, it's just been way too long. You know, <laughs> yep. just wait too long. Like, that's it. You know, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, when is the Course of Miracles talk about community? Because obviously you said you went into the Course of Miracles to kind of not save yourself, but kind of help yourself transform. What made you go from transforming yourself to saying, you know what? This is pretty powerful stuff that might be helpful for other people. So what made it so that you didn't just live the Course of Miracles for yourself and instead decide to share it with the rest of the world? Well, um, the Course of Miracles is a self-study program. I mean, the Course of Miracles does not say that you need to start a church or community or right. even do a group. That's something that has formed because it's helpful. Um, but, but the Course of Miracles in itself is a self-study program, and a lot of people do it that way. In my case, I really wanted help with it because it's very deep and dense. Um, so I went to, you know, this university that is based on A Course in Miracles, which is Pathways of Light. Um, although, um, what I'm, what it is really, what, what got me to get to this space was, I mean, it's not that I, I, I started to, it was kind of a very natural thing for me to start teaching. Um, because, and it started because I, I was a ministerial program and I, and I and have a TV and hosting background. So I was kind of inspired to really speak about these principles just because they were so helpful to me. Right. So I started to speak at Unity of Burbank. Um, it was given very easy. That's what happens when you live in purpose. Um, right. There's, there's no manipulating. There's no trying to make anything happen. It's just it really comes to you. Um, and I always say easy is normal. You know, it's really <laughs> easy. And I started to get... Um, you know, opportunities to speak at Unity of Burbank. And eventually I got an opportunity to start the Spanish ministry there in 2012 and still doing it to this day. And then nice. I started a, and then I started a group every Monday. Um, but even, I didn't even want to write a book. I mean, I, the book came because I, I was drinking Pinot Noir. Um, <laughs> 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 now the truth comes out. <laughs> drinking Pinot Noir and I and I put a post on Facebook that I thought sounded like a book like a book excerpt and I was a little bit ballsy and I wrote um I wrote excerpt from my book when there wasn't no book <laughs> um, it, was, it was a it was a Pinot Noir talking and um I had Patrick D Patrick Miller which is my agent and editor of the book um which is also a course writer and a course student and um he reached out to me and said hey Maria you know I'm always interested in P Course of Miracles teachers that write a book and, um, and I was like, what the heck is this guy talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that funny? And then I remembered that That's the awesome. night before I had written a post on Facebook and I totally forgot about it. I was so embarrassed, so embarrassed. He called me back and um, he, he didn't call me back, but he wrote me another email because I didn't respond to the original one on Facebook. And um, and then I finally told him, listen, Patrick, you know, I'm so embarrassed, but I really don't have a book. You know, it was actually I was drinking Pinot Noir. I was a little bit, I was a little bit buzzed. And it was a Pinot Noir talking, you know? Uh, <laughs> so that's how my book was born. It was because, you know, Pat D. Patrick Miller believed in me. He saw my work on YouTube and my videos. And he told me I spoke about happiness. And I was like, I do? I had no idea I even spoke about happiness, by the way. Um, <laughs> he, says, he says, yeah, every other word is happy this and happy that. And I was like, oh, my God, really? He's like, yeah. And then um, he kind of really pulled my arm and inspired me to do a book proposal because I suffered from dyslexia all my life. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like reading and I don't like writing. Um, I'm, I'm very, you know, I am street smart. I'm more business savvy. I'm more of a talker, you know. Right. Um, I don't like writing that much. So I was a little bit like not interested in it until he told me that, you know, to just give it a shot. And I think that he was so gentle and loving with me and really believed in me and walked me through the steps because he has already published so many books before. Nice. Um, that he really helped me 
um, gain confidence and, and I wrote the book, you know, um, regardless of all my adversities and everything that I thought about myself and my negative thoughts about it right? Um, and fearful thoughts about it, I was able to get over myself, which is the whole subtext of the book is get, get out of your own way, right? Yeah, exactly. I got out of my own way of thinking I was limited, thinking that my dyslexia would take over or, or you know, I'm not going to be good at this because I'm not a good reader or writer. I'm not good with grammar or I don't feel like I'm school, school smart. I've never thought I was school smart or intellectual or intelligent. Right. Um, so Patrick really helped me to integrate like all these, these, this, these, like really believe in it. And um, within the Facebook post and the book deal was exactly six months. Wow. I am, yeah. I am thankful that a bunch of grapes was responsible for your book. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it's such a, it's like such a beautiful story about um, just such miracles. It's so miraculous for, for it, the book deal to come through that. And, and that's what happens when, when you're just like living in purpose. I was not a point in my life, you know, aside from the Pinot Noir, that I was so open right. and so living in alignment and purpose with my work that that's what happens. You know, you're sustained by the love of God. Um, and, and, th- and the universe will show up to support your purpose. I mean, I'm sure that you've experienced that as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And that I, you put it so perfectly because it is right. And in fact, I had an episode of Zen Commuter the other day. I don't know if it was Zen Commuter 5-Minute Mojo, my other show, where I just talked about you don't really have to force everything. In fact, you don't have to force anything. If you just let life unfold, you'll be amazed at how easy it is. Absolutely. And, you know, the word that's coming out right now, like very strong is trust, you know, Um, which is not the typical trust of the world. Like I trust you because you're a good person, you know, in the Course of Miracles in my book, trust is, you know, really allowing yourself to be guided by the love in your mind, like really allowing Holy Spirit to take over and show you what to say, what to do, how to be like, really just let yourself be guided and let go of manipulating, trying to make happen and allow yourself to be shown and then within that you're filled with such wonder and such joy and there's just everything is revealed to you versus of you needed to control you know i feel that we are not happy a lot of the times is because we want to control everything yeah absolutely and it's exhausting oh (laughs) well that's what i said in this post or in this uh, episode i'm like you know when you get it done with the day, if you're tired, it's probably because you're like trying to force the day to be your way. Just like, just let it be. As my mom would say, my mom's favorite quote is trust the process. <laughs> yes. I love that. Again, you could tell she's a, she, she studied the course. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I, I love her. I love her. I love her already. <laughs> yeah. You and me both. She's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, I could tell, you know, there's a lightness to her and the stuff that she's sharing has been sharing with you just comes from such an empowering place of oh, not re- being a victim of the world that you see, you know? It, it's funny. I, I'm, I've got a quote of hers that's right here on my computer. Uh, and every time I look at it, I just think of her and it says, a time for stillness, a time for reflection. I am accomplished. I am whole. I see my power and I understand it. Wow, she's on fire. I want to give her a big, a big kiss and a, I want to <laughs> right? give her a big kiss and a big, big hug. <laughs> to mama, to yeah, mommy. Exactly. A- absolutely. <laughs> well, you know what? We could go on talking for hours and I think we, right? uh, and you know what? When I, when you get up here to Boston, we will have some Pinot Noir together if you're uh, amenable to that. Oh my God, I would love it. How exciting. <laughs> yes. I would absolutely, yes, absolutely love that. Yeah, I'm going to actually be there a little, a little longer, like before the event. So we'll have some time to meet up. Oh, that'd be absolutely yes. awesome. I would love that immensely. Yes, me too. Cool. So how do people go about uh, finding you, following you, keeping up with all the great things that you're doing? Well, the best place I'm, I always say is mariafelipe.org. That's Maria, the last name, F-E-L-I-P-E.org. And on there, I have a tab that says new book plus free bonus that people can get the book there at a discounted price as well as I, I get a bonus awesome. video um, based on the book as well as you can go ahead and um, look at the book tour schedule there because um, I have booked a, over 15 cities in the U.S. So maybe some of, some of the listeners want to come to a workshop and, you know, uh, meet me in person. I would more than love that. Um, so that's available also on the website. And my handle on social media is at R-E-V, that's Rev Maria Felipe, um, on all social media. So that's Facebook and Instagram. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, mm-hmm. I, there is one question I ask all my guests before I uh, send them off to their wonderful life, and that is, 
if you had the attention of the entire world, the entire world was listening to you, what is one thing that you'd want the world to know? Well, what I would want them to know, which is what's coming up very strongly right now, is right. to um, really, really understand that your source and your source is not outside of you and nothing outside of you defines you. You are defined by love. Your source is love. Your source is God. And that you lack nothing and you have everything right now. Amen. <laughs> 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 that is absolutely awesome. Awesome. Hallelujah. Awesome. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> cool. Well, Maria, I want to thank you so much for your time today. It was an absolute pleasure, as I knew it would be, meeting you and talking with you today. And I look forward to when we get together face to face. Me too. Thank you. There's always just something to be said about joining and collaborating for the higher good and sharing a message of love and happiness. So Absolutely. I'm really honored to join with you. <laughs> As am I, my friend. You make it a great rest of the day and a great weekend. And uh, I will talk to you real soon. You too. Bye, everybody. Much love. Much love indeed. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Now that is a perfect way to start a weekend. A great interview with Maria Felipe and myself just talking about ways to be happier. So my friends, you go think about the things that Maria and I talked about. I'm going to be here tonight with another episode of 5-Minute Mojo in the evening and another episode of Zen Commuter in the morning on Monday. But for right now, this is Tom Walters for Zen Commuter signing off, saying make your day, your weekend, and your life absolutely spectacular. <laughs>